wp-get web dev tutorials for all user levels. Okay, so a quick one today um, on Inbricks, how to replace your unordered list standard bullets with icons uh, like these arrows I've got here on this unordered list. If we have a very quick look at the markup for that. Uh, here we go. We've got a standard unordered list, standard list items, and our marker. All right, so there's a few pieces to this. So I'm using uh, one of the theme icons, um, icons, which is a bricks built-in icon font. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that that font is loaded. So bricks has very, very tight code and it only loads what it needs. So unless you have a widget on the page, like I've got here, I've got some icons on the page here, uh, these two here, and also this little arrow down the bottom, um, they're actually using theme icons icons, so Bricks will in fact load the font library um, on this page. If I don't have any of these icons on the page, so no icons here, no arrow there, or the different icons like Font Awesome not, or something like that, it's not going to load the theme icons font library by default. So we have to either add an icon to the page that will force it to load that library, or we need to write some code to uh, tell it to load that library on the page, which is what I'm going to show you here. Uh, the other thing is we need to create a CSS rule to replace this marker, they call it, if they're with the other lists. Uh, we've got to replace that marker with the icon uh, using the theme icons uh, library. So the first part I'm going to talk about is loading the actual library. So in Bricks, I'm just going to bring up a screen here. In Bricks, you've got uh, under the includes and assets, there's a function here called in queue settings specific scripts. What this does is it is a Bricks um, uh, core file which will only look at loading uh, stuff that's actually used and one of them in here is the icon so uh, it's looking for, for example font awesome so if font awesome is used on your page um, it will load the library if it's not it does not load the library uh, there's one here called ion icons uh, there's also themify um, there's a few other bits and pieces in here but one thing I wish they would do differently is in this uh, in queuing here of the actual library, um, they're not registering it. So with WordPress, you can actually register styles and scripts, um, and then when you want to enqueue them, you just enqueue them just by their name. Uh, what they've done in Bricks is they enqueue it using the full path, um, the dependencies, all that sort of stuff in this one line. So what one good change that Bricks could make is to is to register these styles uh, in the in its hook or somewhere around around there. So all we have to do is then call this in queue style and then the name. Then we won't need this whole line here. But because I've done it this way, to enqueue this uh, themify icons font library, uh, we have to do this copy this whole line. So basically, I've copied that line, and over in uh, where are we? Code box. Uh, here we go. I've created a file here um, called Always in Queue theme Themify Icons. And all I'm doing is when the WP and Q scripts hooked runs, I've just copied and pasted that entire line from the Bricks Assets um, file to here. Right now, what we don't want to have, we don't want to lose the, um, I guess, the benefit of having Bricks only load what it needs. So, and again, we only need to do this if there is no Themify icon on that page. Uh, where are we? Go back to it. So if there's no Themify icon on this page, uh, we have to force it to load by running this. So to do that, we can either have this in WP Code Box, we can tell it to run on the front end, admin, or custom. What I'm doing is a custom condition, and I'm telling it only if the page or page URL contains slash author. So I only want it to be on my author um, archive pages is the only time I want to force this. 
Um, if you are going to use this on other pages, you can add those conditions. So start tight, start by not enqueuing it anywhere, and then add the conditions for where you want it to enqueue it. Um, a, I think it's a mistake to uh, just include it and queue it everywhere because you just end up with a lot more um, a code on pages, which is what we're trying to avoid by keeping bricks nice and tight. So that's the enqueuing of this, and I'll, I'll make this code available in the tutorial. Um, now, so now that we've uh, da -da -da, now that we've ensured that this the font library is enqueued, we need to then actually add the CSS rule to change these markers. First thing we do is find out what CSS do we need for the icon. So let's have a look in here. We'll edit with bricks. Okay. Now this is a template file, so I've got all sorts of um, uh, dynamic uh, data here. So the first thing we need is find out what icon we need. So I'm going to just look for icon and drag this icon onto the editor. So we've got this here. I'm going to just change the style of that just so we can see it. Okay, so we've got this star icon here. And let's choose the icon we want. Uh, now, in Themify icons, uh, I think they call it an angle. They do. So here's my angle icon. So I've just changed that, and you can see that over here the icons actually change. Now what I need to do is find out what CSS I need for that. So bring up my dev tools and selecting that item. So here's the widget, which is just a uh, eye um, tag. Uh, and the looking at this, just scrolling through these, what we've got is a rule or anything starting with TI, I assume that's for theme icons, um, has these properties here. I'm not going to worry about the font smoothing. So it has these properties here. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to stick that into a notepad document. So I've got those there. Okay. And then we notice we've got a before uh, pseudo class or pseudo element. So let's have a look what's on there. And on that element, okay, so now we've got the TI angle right. So we use the angle right icon, so I'd say that's the class for it. And the content for that is this here. So I'm going to copy that and stick that into my uh, CSS. So that's the CSS rule I need to display that angle right icon. Now, some of this may not be needed. Some font libraries, unless you specify the right weight, etc., the right variant, it won't display. Um, so I think there's no harm in just leaving whatever uh, Bricks has put on that as part of the rule. Um, so that would be our entire rule there that we need. All right. So heading over to our code box, I've got a um, SCSS, um, which I've uh, just called lists, and I've created a CSS rule called bullet arrow. Um, I've set some padding on the left, which we'll come back to. And what I'm doing for the icon is changing my marker. So uh, the way SCSS works, if you're not familiar with it, is that is our uh, root class for this rule. Uh, and, which means append, so and appends a space ally. Uh, and then under the ally, we've got and with no space, because we want to append this colon colon marker directly to the end of the ally. The rules that we got from our in our notepad document here, we just copy and paste that into there. So that's what we want for the marker. All right. Now this is the CSS, and again I'll, I'll add this to the code uh, that I share. Um, now, all right. So uh, that's pretty much all this. That now the only thing that's left to do is we'll just delete that uh, icon that we just created because we don't need it just there to get the uh, details from. Now this text, rich text box here is what's going to have my content in that has the ally. Uh, it could just as easily be a rich text box if I put in rich, if I just added a rich text box here which is just straight out code and I added some Again, I've got some dark uh, background here, so I'm just going to make this so we can see it. Uh, I'll go back to my content, and I add 
make this into a bullet list. All right, it's just straight out bullets. So actually, if I save that and look at it now, so now I've got just straight out bullets, and then I've got the ones that I've replaced. So to change this here to have the uh, arrow, all I need to do is add, whoops, so on that rich text box, all I need to do is add my bullet arrow class, and now I've got the bullet arrow, so I'll save that. And you can see there now I've got my arrow bullets because all I've done is add that class. All right, so I don't want that, so I'm just going to delete that. Uh, now, so that's pretty much all there is to that. The uh, what else was there to tell you? There was something else. So, so that's what I was going to look at. So I mentioned here that I'm using SCSS. Uh, I'm just going to grab this class name, just copy that class name, and show you what that compiles to. So if I Have a look at this page, have a look at my source and find my bullet arrow. So that is it there. So my SCSS uh, compiled down to bullet arrow with a padding left of 0.5. Actually, I mentioned I was going to say that. So if we have a look at the text on these bullets, there's a gap between the icon and the um, text. Um, that's on one ally. Uh, the way this works is you set the padding left to move that and the marker goes outside the padding. That's just how the HTML works. So all we need is a padding left on that of 0.5 to give some spacing. Bullet arrow, ally, double colon marker, and then our CSS for that particular font icon. All right, so if we basically look at the code box. That's the SCSS. Uh, and that's what it compiles to as CSS. All right, so hopefully that is something that makes sense to you. If you like this uh, and you want to see more of this kind of thing, please like this, please subscribe, and let me know that you would like me to do more of this kind of thing. Thank you.